All right, thank you all for tuning in to WJC LP 98.3 FM Chicago. And I'm your host today. My name is Jeff Badu. Welcome to the show Money Talks, where all we talk is money. I am a parallel entrepreneur and a wealth multiplier. I'm the founder and CEO of Badu Enterprises LLC, which is a multinational conglomerate in the finance industry. And what we do is we provide a suite of financial services, including our marquee company, which is Badu Tax Services. And that's the firm that provides tax preparation, tax planning, and tax representation services to individuals um, and businesses across all 50 states in the U.S. And we also have clients in over 15 countries at the moment. Then we have our real estate investment company. We have Badu Investments LLC, which invests mainly in apartment buildings, rental properties on the south side of Chicago. And basically what we do is uh, we acquire rental properties um, in exchange for cash flow. We improve the units, we improve the management, we improve the systems and everything like that. And in exchange, uh, we provide better cash flow. Then we have Badu Life and Health Solutions LLC, which is our um, real estate, I'm sorry, our life insurance company, our life insurance company, where we provide life insurance products and solutions to individuals, families, and small businesses. Um, and then we have the Badu Foundation that provides um, financial literacy education to the youth ages 6 through 18, where we teach them on topics such as budgeting, saving, investing, and scholarships. My purpose in life is to inspire and support the super hungry to take hold of infinite resources in order to create an abundant lifestyle. All right, so if you're just now tuning in, welcome. Thank you for tuning in to the show Money Talks, where all we talk is money. We're live today on WGHC LP 98.3 FM Chicago. You can catch us live on the radio on 98.3 FM. You can also listen live online on WGHCradio.org. Once again, that's WGHCradio.org. And then we're streaming live on Facebook and then on Instagram. So if you don't mind, if you're on Facebook and Instagram, two things, please. If you don't mind liking and sharing, that's simultaneous. And then also type in a chat where you're listening from so that we can maybe give you a shout out. I already see some comments in the chat. Shout out to Shitron Jen. Um, looks like on Instagram. All right. Shout out to you for listening. All right. So definitely appreciate everyone for tuning in. Yeah, just type in a chat where you're listening from. And if you don't mind just liking and sharing this video, it's always greatly appreciated. Lady K says she's listening from Atlanta. Shout out to ATL. Love Atlanta. Love Atlanta. Jay Wise um, official says he's listening from Chicago. Shout out to Jay Wise. Um, so today we're talking about how to reduce your property taxes by 20% or more. 20% or more. How to reduce your property taxes by 20% or more. That's what we'll be talking about today. Um... As usual, we like to kick it off with the market report. This report is as of December 3rd, 2021. Yeah, shout out to Desi from um, Dallas, Dallas, Texas, love Texas. And shout out to Shitran John from India. Shout out to India, love India as well. I actually plan to visit India pretty soon within the next few years or so. All right, so let's start with the market report. And sorry for the late start today. We'll do about five minutes of the market report. And then we'll start the topic for today at 7.20 p.m. Central. So we'll do five minutes of a market recap, and then we'll go into the topic for today. So um, Wall Street could not maintain its early momentum, closing the week down. Lower than expected employment, near, new reports of Omicron variant cases. Right, We got this COVID-19 variant um, known as the Omicron variant. And a hawkish stance from the Federal Reserve Chair, Jerome Powell, led to uncertainty in the market. All right, each of the benchmark indexes essentially ended the week lower, led by the small caps of the Russell 2000 and the tech-heavy NASDAQ. NASDAQ is composed mainly of technology stocks. All right, and then on top of that, Treasury yields fell 14 basis points to 1.34%. Crude oil prices continued the longest streak of weekly losses since 2018. All right. And then fall in 2.9%, a skid that has run for six consecutive weeks. 
the dollar and gold prices changed little. Only utilities and real estate, shout out to real estate, were able to eke out gains among the market sectors. All right, so it was it was a bit of a, a weird a weird week. Um, so let's start off with last Monday. What happened in the markets last Monday? Um, stocks rallied last Monday. All right, following the previous week's Omicron, right? Omicron um, related sell off. President Biden assured Americans. The response to the Omicron variant would not involve shutdowns or lockdowns. All right, so the president guaranteed or assured us that just because we have this new COVID-19 variant, I was shocked by this, by the way, it would not involve shutdowns nor lockdowns. I was very shocked coming out of a Democratic president, Joe Biden. All right, that lets me know that something is going on in the system that we probably don't know about. All right, they probably want people to travel. Right? They need to make their money. Um, so they will not shut down or lock down the country because of the Omicron variant. All right. For whatever reason, reasons of their own, I'm sure there's legitimate and valid reasons out there. Um, but they said Biden administration or Joe Biden himself said he would not be imposing lockdowns or, shut or shutdowns, at least for the U.S. All right. The Nasdaq went up 1.9%. S&P 500 went up 1.3% just based off this news alone. And then that also, um, the Dow went up 0.7% and the global Dow went up 0.1%. All right, so um, basically, whenever we have news that the economy will not be shut down, then that means more money is circulating in the economy. So that makes investors happy and it increases stock prices overall. All right. So let's talk about last Tuesday. Wall Street ended the day lower last Tuesday as Chair Jerome Powell admitted that recent inflationary pressures are more than just transitory. The emergence of the Omicron variant could pose downside risk to employment and economic recovery and that the Fed may accelerate the tapering of asset purchases. All right. So what happened there? is that stocks then fell again because it's like, okay, well, how is it that we have this new variant? You know, you're trying to increase interest rates, basically, which reduces the money supply, which means less money is circulating in the economy. So as you, see, you can see, there's a common trend. As more money gets circulated into the economy, the more investors get happy and the higher stock prices go, all right? Because there's more money, more demand, right, going into the stocks. And then when we come out with news saying, or I should say they come out with news saying that, hey, we're going to reduce the money supply. We're going to increase interest rates. We're basically going to slow down growth. Then investors get scared and say, okay, let's start selling like crazy. And stock prices go lower. All right, so it's this battle, this, this game that I see being played where it's like, okay, we want more money to be circulated in the economy. That's how stock prices ultimately get in higher. One thing I would say is don't miss out on a boat when it comes to the market. However way you can get into the market, get in. Right? Don't, miss, don't miss the boat just because of all this fluctuation and, and all this stuff. Throw in some money into the market, even if it's $100, $200, 1000 whatever you decide to put in. Put in... The money so you don't you don't miss out on the boat don't put in all your money right look for decent solid safer investments perhaps as your main investment strategy aka real estate or even a business and then maybe dibble and dabble in stocks with your quote-unquote play money so that you don't miss out on the boat and this applies for cryptocurrencies as well all right always do your research before you buy anything Always, always, always do research. Before you buy a stock, please know what the company does and what the five-year trajectory of the company is, at a minimum. Learn about the company. You don't have to be a master at the company. Just learn about it. Do some research. Read an article. Right. Look at some recent news. Do something that will tell you a bit more about what you need to know about this company. Me personally, most of my wealth is tied into real estate because I can control it. It's a stable asset and it's very, very 
easy to for me to know what my real estate is worth, like in my mind at least, as opposed to a stock that I have zero control over. All right, so for me, one of the reasons why I like real estate is the control aspect, all right, the ability to control the asset. All right, so that's what we, we have there. Last Wednesday, stocks suffered their worst back-to-back session since October 2020. It was a bloodbath. The first Omicron case was confirmed, and you might have guessed it. California, shout out to Cali. While new cases were reported in UK, United Kingdom, Switzerland, and Brazil. All right, a decline in tech shares poured the NASDAQ, which is composed mainly of technology stocks. It pulled it down 1.8%. S&P 500, which is composed of the top 500 companies in the U.S., went down 1.2%. And then Thursday, last Thursday notched its biggest advance since October as dip buyers nabbed some of the hardest hit shares during the two-day sell-off. So it's like people just kept buying. Right? People just kept buying on Thursday. Russell 2000 went up 2.7% because of this. Dow went up 1.8%. S&P 500 went up 1.4%. One thing that I noticed is that the stock market is really nothing more than supply and demand. As supply is low, stock prices get higher. As demand is high, stock prices get higher. As demand is low or lower, stock prices get lower. So pay attention to the news when certain things happen. Now, the best investment strategy on the planet is to buy right, a good, solid company. Buy a great company like Apple. Hold it. Just hold it. You can buy more if you want, but just hold it for like five years and watch what happens. Instead of worrying about price fluctuations, oh, so-and-so went up this day and then so-and-so went down this day. I'm trying to time the market today. You know. You won't be able to time the market because you never know what can happen. Nobody could have predicted a COVID-19 new variant called Omicron, right? Nobody. You could have predicted that there would be a new variant in the future, but there's no way that you could have predicted that two Fridays ago we would have a variant that was basically released to the main street public. All right, there's no way you could have predicted that. Maybe if you're a pharmaceutical company, you could have, right? Um, but there's no way anybody that has no insider knowledge could have predicted that. All right, so stocks closed um, out a volatile week in the red last Friday. So last Friday was another bloodbath. All right, so not too good there. Um, so far this year, the Dow Jones is up. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's up 12.98%. So still very solid. NASDAQ is up 17.05%. S&P 500, composed of the top 500 companies in the U.S., this is why buy and hold is very important, is up 20.83%. 20.83% had you just bought at the beginning or basically 12 months ago and just held it until today. Ride the wave, ride the storm. All right, you, You've been really good. You've made 20% on your money which not even Warren Buffett can make on his money on a consistent basis. Russell 2000 went up 9.34%, and then the global Dow went up 13.11%. All right, interest rates, by the way, are at 0%. And this is why when the Fed says, hey, we're trying to increase interest rates, they get people get a little scared. All right, so quick plug. Tomorrow, we have two events. We have an event called Infinite Expansion. Right, infinite expansion, how to infinitely expand your vision of abundance. That's from six to seven, six to six thirty p.m. Central, and then right after six thirty to seven thirty p.m. Central, we have an event called Be Your Own Bank. It is our last major event of the year. Be your own bank, be your own bank, and so please, um, if you want to RSVP, text the word wealth. Right, text the word wealth to seven seven three. 819-5675. Once again, text the word WEALTH to 773-819-5675. And that's how you can get an invitation to both of the events tomorrow. One at 6 p.m. and then another at 6.30 p.m. Both via Zoom. All right, both via Zoom. All right, so what to look forward to this week before we get into our topic for today. 
The first report on inflationary trends is available this week with the release of the November Consumer Price Index, CPI for short. All right. And then prices rose 0.9% in October and have risen 6.2%. The inflation rate right now is at 6.2%. 6.2%. All right. Which means things are 6.2% more expensive than they were 12 months ago. Don't be like rattled by don't don't be surprised by that because things have been getting more expensive and you got to pay attention and make sure you're investing your money there's two reasons main reasons why we invest money number one is to beat inflation inflation right now is at 6.2 percent number two is to take advantage of compound interest like that 20.83 percent that we talked about the s p 500 imagine had you been investing your money Right. Had you been investing your money, you could have not only beat inflation, but you would have beat it tremendously, substantially by about 14 percent. All right. So we got to invest our money. We have to be smart about our money. It's not every day that we will make money on our investments. But for the long run, if you're investing in the right things, you will make your money work for you. You can't just have it sitting in the bank right outside of your reserves, your three months of expenses. You should not have any money sitting in the bank. Uh, you got to get it invested because you don't want inflation to be eating up your money. So after you've crossed the three months of expenses, excuse me, let's say you're, you're spending $1,000 a month in monthly living expenses, then that means you should have 3000 minimum in the bank. Once you've gone over that, you need to invest the money. All right? Unless you have a definitive investment coming up, such as a home or a investment property, something like that. All right, so just um, just something to keep in mind. And then Vinny says, I just seen Bitcoin go up. I just don't know much about it yet. Bitcoin actually went down over 10% over the weekend, just as a heads up. So it hasn't quite gone up, um, you know, at least in the past, in the past week or so. So you just gotta be careful. The only way, truly, to minimize risk when it comes to an investment is to equip yourself with education, knowledge. Let me repeat that one more time. The only way to reduce or eliminate your risk when it comes to an investment is to equip yourself with knowledge and education. All right? Equip yourself with knowledge and education. That is truly the only way. Without the knowledge and education... Like, you might get lucky and make money in the markets, but I, I guarantee you, you'll make a lot more money if you equip yourself with the knowledge and education. Whether it takes you an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, it don't matter, right? Do something that's going to educate you so that you can make money, build abundance, create wealth in that investment. I've spent over a thousand hours personally learning about real estate. Before I got into my first deal, I probably spent about 50 hours learning about real estate. And that's not including the stuff that my parents taught me about real estate. All right. So you got, you got to equip yourself with knowledge. You don't want to do analysis par um, paralysis where you just research and never take action. Right? You do eventually want to take some action once you feel comfortable to make the jump. But you should never, ever, ever get into an investment, any company, anything like that before investing into, before doing research. Um, you should never invest into something before doing research. It should be the other way around. Research first, then invest. And one place to go to is my website, which is jeffbadu.com, J-E-F-F-B-A-D-U.com, jeffbadu.com. It has a lot of free resources on there including my articles, my videos, my podcast, everything like that. And then it has paid resources on there too. The Infinite Wealth Course, all right? And then also the books. And I do have a fourth book that's coming out that will be released um, hopefully January next year. All right, so something to look forward to. It's getting the final finishing touches. You know, we're putting the, the seasoning. Uh, we're actually, we're, we're putting the, the final um, sauces around it, right? So just um, just something that's cooking in the kitchen right now. And it, 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 will be, it will be powerful, and it will change a lot of lives for the better. All right, so with all that out the way, we're at about 7.30 p.m. Central. 
That gives me about 30 minutes to present to you guys today. So first of all, welcome. If you're just joining us, welcome to my show, Money Talks, where all we talk is money. You're listening live to WJTLP 98.3 FM Chicago. You can catch us live on the radio on 98.3 FM in Chicago. Or you can go online at WGHCradio.org. Once again, that's WGHCradio.org. Um, another thing you can do, too, is donate to the station. We are a 501c3 not-for-profit organization. If you need any last-minute donations for your tax write-offs, then go to WGHCradio.org, and you'll get your tax-deductible um, you know, receipt. And, and that way you can claim it on your taxes. All right. If you're listening on Facebook, thank you to my Facebook, Instagram listeners. If you don't mind, just liking and sharing the video and then typing in the chat where you're listening from so that we can maybe give you a shout out. So let's get into the topic, property taxes. Property taxes. I kid you not. I kid you not. My personal property that I live in right now in Cook or Crook County, in Chicago. The property's assessment has gone up about 40%. Meaning my property taxes also went up 40%. There was someone online that posted, there's an app called Next Door Neighbor. Next Door Neighbor. One of my next door neighbors said they received a property tax bill. And for one of the first times in their lives, they actually paid attention to it. And the assessment went up 100%. That means your property tax bill is also going to go up 100%, if not more. All right. So you really have to pay attention. And why are we raising so much awareness today on this topic? Is because 2021 is a reassessment year for... Counties like Cook or Crook County, all right? And what, they're, what, what they've known to be doing is increasing assessments anywhere from 20 to 100%. Meaning if your property tax bill was $4,000 last, like for 2020, and property taxes are in arrears, by the way, just like income taxes. If your property taxes were $4,000 in 2020, they could very well go up to $8,000 in 2021. And guess what? Over 63% of people in Illinois do nothing about it. <laughs> Over 63% of people in Illinois do absolutely nothing about what I just told you right now. By the way, this doesn't just apply to Illinois. Today, we're just focusing. We're using an example, right? A real-life example with Illinois being our state. Of course, it happens to be my state currently, right? But this applies to Texas. This applies to Georgia, right? This applies to everybody. You want to make sure you get in touch with your local property tax appeal company, such as Badu Appeals LLC in Chicago. Um, you also want to consult with a property tax appeal attorney, right? Property tax appeal attorney. All right, and Jerry Jerry mentioned, shout out to Jerry B. from the Badu Tax Services team. He said he wants to be a part of that 37%, the people who actually appeal, appeal to taxes. All right, we got a few more folks that join us. Shout out to Ms. Latoya Wallace on the Badu Tax Services team. Shout out to Mr. Mr. Marshall, uh, Mr. Marshall on the Badu Tax Services team. Um, and then, of course, we got Desi from the Badu Tax Services team as well. We got a, a full house today. So we're talking about, for those who are just joining us, how to reduce your property tax bill by 20% or more. And even if you don't own a property currently, what better time to know this stuff than before you buy the property? Maybe on your, you know, your bucket list or your vision board for 2021 or 2022 is to buy a, bro- buy a property. You might want to know these things. When I found out that Crook County... Right, over 63% of the people living in Crook County are being overassessed on property taxes. One of the first things I did was I signed up to appeal my property taxes. And just like Mr. Underscore Marshall, underscore, underscore Mr. Marshall um, on IG says he's signing up. Absolutely. He went to BaduAppeals.com, B-A-D-U Appeals.com. 
You can get a free assessment where it scans up to a thousand properties next to you within 10 seconds. That's the technology we have built in within the website. 100% free assessment. And then if you decide to move forward, then you can make your investment. And yes, Vinny says, yes, Crook County, absolutely. Crook County is over-assessing people. My next door neighbor, I think I posted this on my IG um, story today. It was shocking. They said they looked at their property tax bill and it went up or their assessment online. Everybody got a letter in the mail. Like you should have. You know, we got a lot of properties in Chicago. All of our properties, we got something in the mail saying that, hey, your assessments have gone up. Now, I noticed, though, on the ones that I did appeal, the ones that I that I did appeal, I appeal every year, they've actually gone down. So if the assessment was 11000 it's now 10000 And I'm like, hmm, <laughs> right? So they can only hit you if you're not paying attention or if you're not actually appealing. Same thing with income taxes, by the way. This, this concept doesn't just apply to property taxes. It applies to income taxes as well. If you're not doing anything about your income tax situation through proactive tax planning, then, of course, Uncle Sam is going to eat you up a lot because you're probably used to paying him 30 40% a year. You're like, oh, yeah, keep the 30 keep the 40 all right? You're basically giving out like charity. Instead, you can be doing some proactive tax planning and putting that 30 to 40 percent back into your pocket to create long term sustainable wealth for you and a thousand plus generations that come after you. All right. So this this is important. And property taxes are not a small amount of a person's budget when it comes to their house. It can be quite substantial, especially if you live in the suburbs. All right. Even in the south suburbs. It's crazy. I mean, we bought a house and we don't do single family homes anymore, anymore, but we bought a single family home in Chicago Heights and the property tax bill was scary. It was more than the property tax bill in Chicago. Right. Which was crazy. So overall, you want to make sure that you appeal your property taxes at a minimum one time a year, once a year. Today, I will teach you and show you how to appeal your property taxes by at least, right, at least 20% per year, 20% plus per year. And remember, 2021 was a reassessment year because 2020 was skipped because of COVID-19, right? 2021 in Cook County is a reassessment year. So everybody's about to get their property tax bills for 2021, which would be paid in 2022. And when they get it, they'll be extremely shocked and say, whoa, I paid $3,000 last year. Why am I now paying $5,000? It's because Crook County has increased the assessed value of your property, which effectively increases the property tax amount that you pay on that property. For us and our investment company and personally, we appeal our property taxes at a minimum three times a year, right? Three times a year. And I'll show you how to do that. But one way, if you want to get a head start, is go to baduappeals.com, B-A-D-U appeals.com. Shout out to Desi for posting the link on um, Instagram. So baduappeals.com. So most people are overpaying on their property taxes, especially in Cook or Crook County. And by the way, I dubbed it Crook County when I found out about the property tax overassessment. It's like, man, you know that people aren't appealing. So they're consistently attacking. And I do say attacking these people or homeowners by consistently increasing their property taxes. Investors included, by the way. Two things you want to do when you grab an investment in real estate. Rental property. Number one, you want to find ways to increase the income. One way to do that is to increase the rents. Number two is you want to reduce the expenses. And one way to do that is to reduce your property taxes. Before we buy a building, we always find out how can we improve the cash flow, the operations of this building before, not after, before. And then when we do buy the building, We put things into action. We appeal to property taxes immediately. 
we make sure that our insurance quote is you know is compatible with um, or it's it's basically um, competitive I should say competitive right we have contracts with um, the repair the maintenance team contractors who do work for other properties so we achieve economies of scale all right and then we look into other areas where we can reduce expenses we're not being minimalists or anything like that. Hey, we got a business to run. When you buy a building, you are buying a business. Let me repeat that one more time. When you buy a building, you are buying a business. You need to learn how to manage the building. You need to learn how to manage people. You need to learn how to read P&Ls and numbers. All right? And I'm not just saying this because I'm an accountant. It's because that is the reality of buying a building. All right, so one way to increase the cash flow of the building and trust me, you want to increase the cash flow of the building. That is to appeal the property taxes at least once a year on every building you own. Property tax is assessed on the perceived value of the property, typically valued every three years. All right. So remember, I just told you guys that 2021 was a reassessment year in places like Cook County. So basically, three years ago, we had a reassessment. And guess what? That assessed value pretty much stays the same for the next three years. So if you have not appealed, that increase, that 100% increase, now goes on for not just one year, but three years in a row. And then what happens after year three? Of course, they're going to do the same thing. They're like, man. This guy, this girl doesn't appeal. Why in the world, why won't we just slap them with another increase? Property values increase anyway due to inflation and all of that. Why not just hit them? Let's see what happens. So now you understand one way that Crook County gets their money. All right? And so always keep these things in mind. And then what can happen is someone can now, now be able to unable to afford their property taxes. And guess what happens? A tax lien can get filed against them by the county. And then the county sells that lien into the public auction that someone can buy. And then if you don't pay that person within a set amount of time, in Cook County is about two years, and in, in um, Lake County, Indiana, it's six months. If you don't pay them, they can file a tax deed on your property and claim the rights to your property in full without you doing anything about it. They do have tax sales or tax lien auctions coming up um, in various places. I know, I think Atlanta recently had theirs or, or it's coming up. Shout out to Atlanta, by the way. Um, so you really want to pay attention to this stuff. We're talking today about buying a home or investing in a property and how you should appeal your property taxes at least one time a year or You'll get crooked, right? Over 63%, over 63% of the properties in the state of Illinois are overassessed currently as we speak. And that number probably just went up this year because of the reassessment year. Your property value is compared to other similar properties in your area based on square footage, bedroom count, and bathroom count. Square footage, bedroom count, and bathroom count. Within a one a one half to one mile radius or so, a property next to you is compared to your property. And of course, they don't go inside of these properties to see the updates or lack of updates that have been made. So that nice luxury apartment building or single family that was just built next to you, guess what? They're comparing that to you too. Until you appeal and show them some pictures, some comps, right? Show them that, hey, my property is not worth what you are comparing it to this luxury, brand new construction building, right? And that's what happens if you don't pay attention and appeal. So today we're raising awareness and showing you how and why you should appeal your property taxes. So what happens is that between three properties, three values, your property is right in the middle of that. 
and that's how they get the assessed value. Luckily, you can appeal your property taxes. In Cook County, you can appeal your property taxes up to three times a year. Three times a year. One at the assessor level, number two at the board of review level, and number three at the property tax appeal board level. By the way, when you go to BaduAppeals.com and you sign up for an appeal, we appeal at all three levels for the same price. You don't have to pay anything extra. We appeal at all three levels for you, and you get email updates as we appeal. Sometimes you'll get a check in the mail for a refund if you've already paid the property taxes, or you'll see your property tax bill or assessed value get reduced, which is what happened to most of our properties for 2021 because we've been appealing for a long time. All right? And the new buildings we buy, one of the first things we do is we appeal the property taxes, even on the larger buildings, 20 units, 30 units. Right? We want to appeal those property taxes. It is a bit more of a process, more involved of a process when you're doing a large residential multifamily building, though. Most people don't appeal, so they keep getting overassessed each year. Right? They keep getting overassessed. And this is where, when I say crook, right, making a joke out of it, but when I say crook, that's what I mean. They keep robbing you because you're not paying attention. What happens when you leave your purse unattended for even an hour and it's just laying there? Somebody's going to take it. And what happens when that person has been watching you and you buy a new purse each week and they notice you leave it there for an hour? They'll keep taking it away from you. It's, you know, In a way, it is common sense. But at the end of the day, that makes them a crook and a thief. And so that's where the whole concept comes from. By the way, at Badu Tax Services, we're here to give the money to the people, not take the money away from the people. We're here to give the money. Same thing with Badu Appeals LLC. We're here to protect your interests when it comes to your finances by giving you back the hard-earned dollars you've worked hard for and not taking away that money from you. Of course, you'll have to make an investment to capture that savings, as you should. Right? If I told you, hey, I got $5,000 with your name on it. All you got to do is pay me $1,000. Well, I just gave you $4,000 more that you, you would have never had. So understand the concept of investing in yourself. Right? Sometimes it, 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 you, have to, you have to pay to play. Sometimes it takes money to make money, even if you got to borrow the money. All right, so that, just keep that in mind. Um, good tax planning considers not only income taxes, but also property taxes. And then there's sales taxes and so on and so forth. You can appeal through an attorney who will likely take a portion of your savings, typically 30 to 50% of the savings amount. Or you can appeal through an external company, such as Badu Appeals LLC, our website is baduappeals.com. And what we do is we have monthly subscription if you want. Or you can pay it up front. You can appeal up to five years in a row. You can pay for up to five years in a row. And the cost comes where if you do a five-year appeal, it comes out to about 10 to 20% of the savings. Very competitive compared to 30 to 50% of the savings amount. All right, very, very competitive. So we can appeal for you at all three levels, by the way. An attorney, they might charge you per each level, all right? One of my clients recently saved about $2,000 just in one year for an appeal. And they're probably going to be able to do this for the next three years because they signed up, actually five years, because they signed up for a five-year appeal. And whatever number you see on the website is the conservative estimate. You want to be conservative. It's usually a higher number than that. And keep in mind, if you're saving 2000 now and they were trying to reassess you where you would have paid 5000 that means you saved $3,000. All right, once you appeal, the county will be more hesitant to overassess you. It's like the IRS. All right, once you've been strategizing, keeping good documentation, they can't really touch you. They'll try, but they can't really touch you at that point. So as you're appealing, you're also reducing the chances of you getting overassessed on your property taxes. You should appeal each and every year and possibly at all three levels each and every year. So three times a year, if possible. All right. Always know your deadlines. Each township. 
So within each county is also a township. Each township has their own deadlines. For example, there's a Lakeview Township. There's a Lake Township, right? There's all of these townships where you have to make sure you, you know the deadlines. You can go on your county's assessor's website and look at the deadline, the appeal deadlines for the township. And if you pay for an appeal on bodyappeals.com, we'll make sure we meet the deadline. So you don't have to worry about the deadline piece. We'll, we'll keep tab of all of that for you, and we'll make sure we get something submitted before the deadline hits. All right, we got nine more minutes to go here. Thank you, for everyone, for tuning in so far. Townships are open for a short period of time throughout the year, typically 30 days, right? Typically 30 days. So you have to be very careful and very, um, you know, you just have to be pay close attention to details. Property taxes are paid in arrears just like income taxes. So the taxes we're paying in 2021 is actually 2020's property taxes. Same thing when you file your income taxes. The taxes that we're paying in 2022 are 2021's property taxes. It's very, very simple. So when you appeal and you haven't received your property tax bill yet for the current year, then what happens is you'll get a reduction of your property tax amount. If you've appealed for a year where you've already paid the taxes, then you'll get a check in the mail from the county with your name on it saying, here's your refund for how much we over-assessed you, right? We thought you were a fool, so we over-assessed you, and here's your money, here's your cash back for the over-assessment we did on your property taxes. Badu Appeals will give you a refund if appeals are unsuccessful at all three levels. We have over a 90% success rate at the moment. Over a 90% success rate. Meaning, if you go on a website right now and we say that we can save you $1,500, right? there's a 90% chance that that's actually going to happen. And in the event that does not happen, we'll either refund you your money at your request or we'll apply it to a future appeal. So there is a money-back guarantee. Remember, we have a software that you can, you can literally use for free right now. You can scan up to 1,000 properties. It, it scans up to 1,000 properties near you within 10 seconds. I kid you not. The software can scan up to 1,000 properties near you. Similar square footage, um, bedroom count, bathroom count, within 10 seconds. It has algorithms built in within it. It's not a cryptocurrency or anything like that or, you know, blockchain and any of that stuff. Uh, but it is very powerful artificial intelligence technology, AR for short. All right. So one thing to be very careful of is appealing if you have certain exemptions, such as a senior freeze, the senior freeze exemption, uh, because you could lose it if you appeal. Now, speaking of exemptions, you do want to apply for exemptions each year. So they have the homeowner's exemption, which reduces your property taxes by a certain amount because you're a homeowner. You do want to take advantage of your exemptions. If you don't, if, if you haven't applied for exemptions and you just bought a house or you own a home, please apply for them. It's very simple. Go on your county's website and apply. Right? Very, very simple. If you don't have enough comps in your area, it's, it's going to be hard to appeal. And and BaduAppeals.com will tell you that, right? Hey, we can't find similar properties near you. Come back at a later time. That means we don't have enough properties near you to generate a successful appeal. We're not going to put you at risk. And that's why I'm saying we have a 90, over 90% 90 success rate when it comes to the appeals. I appeal all of my properties to, through Badu Appeals LLC. I mean, who would I be to not practice what I'm actually preaching to you right now? Right. And then if you live in a condo, ask your condo board to do a group appeal. They can go to BaduAppeals.com as well. So if you live in a condo, please talk to the management. Make sure, please make sure that they are appealing the property taxes. Because if they're not proactive, if they're a bit lazy, and they're not appealing, that's going to come out of your pocket. And of course, potentially the board's pocket too. So if you live in a condo, which in my opinion is one of the worst investments on the planet because you have zero control in a condo, 
Um, any investment to me where you have zero control is not all that good of an investment, by the way. That's just my opinion. Um, so if you live in a condo, just ask your condo board, right? Tell them, go to BaduAppeals.com and get that appeal in. Or they can talk to an attorney or a reputable property tax appeal company. So to conclude, taxes are a person's are typically a person's biggest expense. Let me repeat that one more time for those who may not know this point. Taxes are typically a person's biggest expense. It's not housing. It's not your car. It's not your student loans. It's taxes. Taxes can eat you alive. Number one is income taxes. Number two, property taxes. It's very important to be paying attention to not just one, but both. All right. So when you reduce your property taxes, you put more disposable income back into your pocket so that now you can invest into stocks, real estate, investment properties, cryptocurrencies, whatever you decide to invest your money on. Hey, what's going on, Sudar? Um, don't forget to appeal your property taxes. Put it in your calendar. I got to appeal. And if you go to BaduAppeals.com, you can sign up for five years. Up to five years in advance, you just sit back, relax. You will have to sign a DocuSign periodically. But outside of that, you, you sit back and relax. And next thing you know, we appeal to property taxes for you. If you would like an appeal, we can certainly help you out with that. Just go to BaduAppeals.com. Once again, that's B-A-D-U-Appeals.com. Um, so don't, don't let the tax man get you. Don't let the tax man get you. All you got to do is be proactive and take a little bit of action today. That's all. That's it. I've just equipped you with information that you may have not known before today. So go to BaduAppeals.com if you're in Cook County and get a, a free assessment today. And if you're not in Cook County, then go to your local property tax appeal company. You can search them online or you can go to an attorney. All right. It just happens that Badu Tax, Badu Appeals um, is a, basically, it, it's a pretty big property tax appeal company that has attorneys on the team, right? And we just happen to focus on Cook County because of the way our technology is built. The way our software is built is to scan properties in Cook County. That's where our sweet spot is. But remember, you can appeal through pretty much anybody. So hopefully you gain some knowledge and education out of that. So thank you, everyone, once again, for tuning in to my show, Money Talks, where all we talk is money. Um, I'll be back next week. And after that, I'll be gone for the rest of the year on travel out of the country, Christmas travel. And so with that, my name is Chef Badu, and I look forward to continuously and consistently delivering you all some content. Thank you.